Right, Norton Yachts. It's 96 degrees outside today. This boat's brand new. It was ordered by the owner to uh, be without a generator and without air conditioning, which is certainly a bold move down here in the Chesapeake. So he called on us, Boat RX, and we gave it the battery powered air conditioning treatment. What's well, normally the generator compartment? I don't want this to be lost on anybody that this boat does not have a generator. Instead, we use the space to install the central condensing unit for our VRV air conditioning system from Thermodynamica. Wow. Mm -hmm. He thinks I'm crazy. There you go, 95 and Delta Bill. So, uh, right now we're maintaining temperature on this boat on 1500 watts of power, which is pretty great. Now, I'm not trying to you know, state any ridiculous claims here. 1500 watts is, is really efficient to keep this boat cool. And we used a lot more than 1500 watts to get it to this point. Okay, this, this system was drawn like 2,800 watts um, to bring the boat down to temperature to do the initial cool down. But that's where the VRV system excels. This is so important. A lot of people don't, when they're looking at high efficiency air conditioning systems, they don't understand that it's not just about the running power, the power consumption that it uses at, at its maximum state. It's about how quickly can the boat bring the latent heat load down? How quickly can it condense the water vapor out of the air on those coils, drip them out through the through those condensate pumps and get it overboard so that there's no more water vapor left, no more humidity left on the inside of the boat. So this system can use like 3,000 watts of power and rapidly cool the inside of the boat. Now, that's a lot of power to take from batteries. True. Start your integral, start your generator, start charging your batteries, use any surplus power to also cool your boat down came down from a long day's sail, you get where I'm going with this, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, when the engine's running, use as much power as you can. Yeah, do, use your, do your initial cool down while you have your engine running, shut the engine down, now your batteries are charged and your cabin is cool, and then we can get the air conditioning to enter into a state where it's just maintaining using very little power. And if we maintain that state throughout the day or throughout the afternoon and evening, then the sun starts going down, and we'll, as we'll demonstrate later, and we can keep the cabin cool on much less power because we don't have the solar gain, uh, of course, of the hot sun on the deck and on the hatches and everything like that. Yeah. Is that orange thing part of the system? Or? It's our condensate pump. Um, the condensate pump system is a really important part of any air conditioning system. There's a variety of ways to do it. Condensate water, of course, is the, the water vapor that's in the air, which we call humidity which gets condensed on the cold coil, drips down off the cold coil into the drain pan. So it's that sweat you were doing. Yeah, this and then out. drains yeah. through these hoses into this little automatic pump. And we use that pump to pump that condensate water directly overboard. So all of this is like so important that all of the water vapor we take out of the air is not kept in the boat, it's actually put back to the outside. And that helps maintain comfort, keeps the boat dry, and it keeps the boat healthy and um, you know, prevents it from aging, like you know, wet bilges and stuff like that, you get moisture into the floors. So there's different ways to handle it. When we sell these systems, we have to have a conversation with the customer about what their budget is and what they're willing to invest in in terms of the condensate pump system. And there's, like I said, there's different ways to do it. We've got a lot that we did in here, and you know, a good example of a job well done in our world, in the electrical mechanical systems world, is that it's mostly invisible. Yeah. So, there's a lot to talk about, but tell me what you want to know. I want to know more about the customer. You know, okay. Who, like, why, why did he get a brand new boat without air conditioning, without a generator and that stuff? Yeah. I think certain people, like myself, and this customer, would think, like, why would you get a generator these days? I mean, this customer drives a Tesla, and has since I think they were released. I heard those are nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think that when you have that experience of, running on battery power, like across the road, also, you know, being climate controlled and everything, you wonder if your sailboat already has some form of energy production in the form of a diesel engine, it's main propulsion engine, why should you need another one? Um, and if you're someone who follows a little bit about new technologies and you understand that energy storage uh, technology has advanced so much, and there's so much more that we can do with it, uh, I think the choice becomes obvious. So, tell me about the, the power on this boat. So, 
where are we generating power, how are we storing it, and how are we using it? Right. Well, you know, every boat has batteries. <laughs> um, and most people, especially boats in the U.S., are familiar with their 12-volt DC system. And this boat has a 12-volt DC system that we mostly didn't mess with. Uh, we did change the batteries. Those batteries are now lithium. They're back here. 12-volt size is the green. Green batteries, these are kilovolt uh, internal BMS lithium iron phosphate batteries. So it's like a, a bunk back here normally? Yep, yeah, this is a sleeping cabin. So these batteries will um, continue to function just the way the, the stock AGM batteries would have. Um, and they'll continue to get charged from a uh, now an externally regulated 12 volt alternator on the main engine. But what's new is that they also additionally get charged from another set of batteries. It's like a, it's like a cascade of power from <clears throat> the higher voltage batteries. These are 24 volt um, smart lithium batteries from Victron Energy wired in two series pairs to create a 40 volt, 48 volt battery bank. This is 400 amp hours of uh, lithium battery power at 48 volts. Sure. So if you're used to thinking in 12 volt terms, you've got 1600 amp hours at the 12 volt equivalent, and then an additional 300 um, for the house bank. So we use DC converters to, to keep the 12 volts charged. Now I don't want to get too technical too fast because <laughs> I have a habit of doing that. Um, but this is where the energy gets stored and we use it in a variety of ways. We generate it in a variety of ways. Let's move on some more some the, how we're actually generating. Uh, it's going to generate it. Come from sure. Oh, it's that pink thing. Yeah, this is uh, mm -hmm. this device is like a mega alternator. It's a three phase uh, generator that gets rectified to 48 volts DC or about 56 volts um, DC for charging, and it smartly loads the engine based on the engine RPM and propeller load. This thing can rapidly charge the batteries when the main engine is running. It can charge them so quickly that, that the battery, the, the engine doesn't have to run that many hours a day to keep up with all the loads on the boat, including the air conditioning. Now, we also kept the 12 volt uh, stock alternator, the 120 amp Vallejo alternator that a lot of people are familiar with because they come with these Yanmar diesels. Um, but we converted it to external regulation and use a Balmar um, alternator regulator. And that regulator um, is looking at battery temperature, battery voltage, but also the alternator temperature because we're charging lithium batteries, we need to make sure that we don't overheat the alternator and it's taking all that into account. So it's a pretty sophisticated system, but when it's all set up and installed really professionally, it just works. Yeah. So is this, like, the integral produces what? It max output is nine kilowatts? Nine, yeah. Nine it, kilowatts. It, it, it's, it's a bit less when it's when it heats up, and this engine room, unfortunately, doesn't have the best ventilation, so we'll, in our tests, we're seeing um, more like seven, eight kilowatts. We're seeing that at 12 to 1500 RPMs. Wow. So that's, you're hardly on the throttle, and you're getting an enormous amount of power output. But is that, so that's, that's like almost seven, eight kilowatts. That's going to rob some horsepower from the engine, isn't it? Or? It is, but it's horsepower that we, we can rob. Sure. Um, because at the lower RPMs, if we're in gear, the propeller is not loading the engine because the propeller is pitched in such a way that it only loads the engine to its full torque at cruising RPM or at max RPM. Uh, and so everything in the mid range of the RPM curve is, uh, is extra power available. Now, um, if we're neutral, then we've got all the power available of the engine and the Integral knows we're in neutral because it communicates with the engine through its J1939 bus, which is a CAN bus, it's a data communication. Isn't it typically bad to, to run an engine, like it's a normal, you know, before Integral, mm -hmm. wasn't it hard to, to run an engine while you're at anchor for power? Isn't that bad for the engine? Well, it's bad for the engine because you, when you run the engine underloaded with not enough resistance on its internals, uh, you can cause carbon buildup and then glazing of the cylinders that can cause premature engine failure. So the integral prevents that because it's sized perfectly for this size of engine. It's actually allowing the engine to be fully loaded. It's allowing it to operate at proper operating temperature. It actually increases uh, fuel efficiency, which is a little mind blowing, but it does. Um, and it does that. So it, you could you can argue that it, it uh, prolongs the life of the engine. That's amazing. Yeah. But what about at the top end of things? Like it's going to rob some speed? Am I going to lose a knot when I'm going at the high end of things? Because, it, no? because it's sensing the RPM and it's, it's applying its load um, to the engine based on the RPM, uh, 
it backs off at very low RPM, so it doesn't stall the engine, and it backs off at very high P RPM when it's in gear, so that uh, the full power of the engine is available. Also, if you're maneuvering in and out of the dock and you're in and out of gear, it says it backs off a little bit. It doesn't take too much power. Sure. Yeah, it's pretty smart. It's amazing. I'm very yeah. impressed. Cool. So, what I else think, can I show you? I think that's it for the engine room. Um, uh, I think you should go in there first for camera angles. <laughs> Um, you've got the stock Juno uh, circuit breaker distribution panels here, shore power in, but we, we've changed the configuration of everything, so let's trace it out real quick if, if that's interesting to you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, oh, and I should mention that this room is, it might feel a little odd to see that we mounted a lot of equipment on the wall, like on the bulkhead of just diamond plate in the cabin. Yeah. This is what Juno calls their two cabin layout. Uh, rather than the three cabin layout, so this is actually not a sleeping berth, and this is a utility room, which is a major gift to us as installers that we had space to put a lot of stuff in. Um, that being said, if we were to do another one of these, if you have a three cabin layout, we have all kinds of ideas where these inverters can go. But we chose to put them here, and uh, let, me, let me walk you through it. So, shore power gets plugged in in the back of the boat and comes through this breaker here, and that power travels all the way up to this Victron Energy Multi Plus. It's a 48 volt inverter charger uh, with a 5,000 watt capacity. Um, so if we have power coming in, this functions as a battery charger. And if we don't have power coming in, this functions as an inverter and it takes the energy in the batteries and converts it to 230 volts. From there, we go into this auto transformer and here's how we take 230 volts. We pass that through, but we also create a neutral um, so we can power our 115 volt circuits, which in this boat are primarily just the, the plug circuits, the outlets. We take the output of this, we go back to the distribution panel where we breaker all of our loads. And uh, some of those loads, of course, is the air conditioning and those air handlers. Very cool. Yeah. And the other stuff you might see in here is um, we have the DC converters for keeping the 12 volt system charged. We have uh, Solar controllers, charge controllers for solar panels. Um, up here we have this uh, Link Smart BMS, which is the, the, the brain uh, of the battery system. Uh, this is an external BMS battery system, and we're, a lot of people are concerned about lithium, but we're doing all the right things to, to measure temperature and current and voltage and maintain balance between the banks and equal length cables and all the stuff that people love to talk about online that are starting to educate themselves about this stuff. Um, very careful about all these things. And that communicates directly with the 48 volt bank, correct? That's right. In fact, all of the Victron equipment communicates on, on a bus. And uh, yeah, there's a lot going on here, but let's save that. Um, I'll show you some of the displays here. Servo GX, it's called. This is the Touch GX. This, this gives us a real time look at. what the status of the system is, the electrical system. So you can see we have 80% charge in the batteries. You can see we're using 1,500 watts of power on the AC side. I think that's, I'm walking through the entire boat and I'm really impressed by the system. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I also just want to remind everybody that like at BoatRx, this is what we do. We're a battery powered air conditioning company. We design lithium battery systems. We design all the charging sources and we're HVAC professionals, so we know how to install really advanced high efficiency air conditioning systems. And it's part of our process to work with clients on custom projects and walk them through the engineering, the design, and then ultimately to the, the installation, wherever you are on the East Coast. So, thanks Lex. Thank you. Yeah.